Good morning, uh, members of the City Council. My name is uh, Lawrence Epstein. I'm the Executive Vice President and General Counsel at Zufa LLC, which is the owner of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And uh, I just want to introduce uh, quickly, seated to my right here is uh, Michael Mersch. Mike is a Vice President with Zufa and our Assistant General Counsel, and uh, he uh, will also be available for questions following my brief presentation. Um, I want to uh, first of all say that uh, I've traveled around the world talking about issues relating to the regulation of mixed martial arts. And um, I've been to a lot of hearings like this uh, around the world uh, in many states and as I said in many countries throughout the world. And I think the presentation that was put together here today was very comprehensive, I think very fair and well reasoned. And I think uh, um, as a result of that my comments today will be pretty brief. I want to try to address the issues that I think are important to the council people that I've heard uh, here today. And before I do that, I want to give just a quick, brief background on my company, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Uh, we are the largest uh, mixed martial arts promotional company in the world. Uh, we have staged events all over the world, as I mentioned, uh, certainly in the United States, uh, the United Kingdom on many occasions, Germany and uh, Australia. We've also conducted, as was mentioned earlier, a couple of very successful events in uh, Montreal over the last couple of years. Regulation is a key part of the success of our company. Uh, we will not go to any jurisdiction that does not properly regulate the sport. Right now, there are 42 out of 48 states in the United States that have athletic commissions. And uh, we have chosen at, at significant financial detriment to our company not to do events in any state that does not properly regulate the sport. So we believe regulation is key to the success of our business. We think, more importantly, it's key to the safety of the athletes that participate in our business. Having said that, uh, we don't just talk that talk. We actually have a deep regulatory team within our company. Uh, Mark Ratner, who is uh, our Vice President of Government and Regulatory Affairs, ran the Nevada Athletic Commission for 14 years. Uh, Lorenzo Fertitta, our main owner, was the chairman of the Nevada Athletic Commission for several years. Mike Mersch, who sat to my right and I introduced earlier, was a former Assistant Attorney General who uh, provided legal counsel to the Nevada Athletic Commission. So we don't just come and, and make broad statements about how important regulation is to us. We actually have, a, a, frankly, the deepest regulatory team uh, anywhere in the world when it comes to combat sports. We, we are very excited and very hopeful that we can conduct an event here in Vancouver in, uh, in June of 2010. Uh, we've worked uh, with the, the GM Place, and uh, we are, uh, as I said, hopeful that we will have the adequate regulation and the approval of this commission to conduct that event. But we're very excited uh, about that. We, we know, and I, I read the uh, information contained in the report of Mr. Hamels about the economic impact, that an event here will be very successful. It will bring significant economic impact to the city of, uh, of Vancouver. The big issues, it appears to me, that, that you've identified relate to insurance and indemnity. Let me take a moment to address those. First of all, on the insurance front, um, and obviously we'll be happy to provide you with backup information relating to this, but typically for events we have a minimum of $12 million in insurance for all of our events. So uh, we have a significant amount of insurance. Uh, as far as claims go, we, we really don't have much of a claims history, but we obviously have that insurance in place. That insurance is, is multifold. First of all, it obviously covers situations where somebody trips and falls in the venue, uh, you know, God forbid, a uh, piece of equipment falls, etc., uh, there are covers for those uh, what we call uh, sort of comprehensive general liability. We also provide insurance for the participants, both on a, on a, uh, on a health and death basis. Uh, uh, once again, we have never had any really serious injuries in, in the UFC. We obviously had no deaths, but we have that coverage in place, both for medical and, and life insurance. The indemnity issue is also one that we've addressed in many uh, places uh, around the world. As, as you're aware, in many places, arenas uh, are owned or at least part owned or financed by cities. And so we have been at, in, in many occasions, had cities, states uh, come to us and say and ask for indemnities. And on probably a uh, half a dozen to a dozen occasions, we provided indemnities to various cities. Those cities would include places like Portland, Oregon, San Antonio, Texas, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Many times these indemnities go beyond the city but go to the state uh, or in this case, the provincial level. So we're familiar with providing indemnities. We're, we're certainly willing to work with your legal team to provide a reasonable indemnity. And uh, I'm happy to provide to you copies of some of the indemnities that we've, we've actually provided to other cities and states uh, around the world. Um, 
Once again, I think the, the presentation that was provided by Mr. Hamels was, was very comprehensive, and I know there's a lot to, to handle here today. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have about the UFC uh, or about any other issues you may have uh, relating to the sport of mixed martial arts. Thank you. You do have some questions. Councillor Jang. I am over here. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. That was very helpful. You answered some of my questions uh, about the types of insurance that you normally provide for various state and, and provincial bodies and things like that. Uh, but, um, of course, I'm always looking for the little nig. And uh, you said, we don't have much of a claims history. That always sounds to me like, well, we're just not going to want to talk about that a little bit. Could you give me a little more background on that? What types of claims have you had in terms of the participants or other general liabilities? Just to give me a, a bigger picture of what you've actually had to pay out. Okay. Well, the reality is we haven't had any, any claims on our, our comprehensive general liability. We had one situation in an arena in Sacramento, which is partially owned by the city, that uh, somebody fell at the, uh, at the event and was injured. Um, we were not sued in that lawsuit. The arena was sued. There are some insurance issues relating to it. We provided indemnity for that uh, particular, okay. particular claim. But that's really the only what I would call comprehensive general liability type claim we've had. Um, as far as participants... You know, certainly people have been injured in events, and we provide medical coverage for, for all of those participants. Uh, but that would essentially be our claims history when it comes to our events. Okay, so sort of part of the business of doing business right. types of claims. So uh, in, about the events themselves a little bit, you know, I know that when I watch it on TV, it looks a little different because it's always hepped up and it's the music, you know, so like, wow, here we go. Um, but, um, you know, and I kind of sit there and I kind of feel shocked a little bit. Um, but could you tell me a little bit more about some of the uh, the crowd control issues that you've had there? I mean, you know, like one of the issues that was kind of brought up, you know, do, when kids watch it, do they get kind of excited and they want to go crazy? Or what, what's the crowds actually like within one of these large uh, events? I mean, do we get the fighting, uh, that kind of stuff? Of course, we don't see that on TV because they're nicely edited out. But, uh, you know, I want to hear it from you guys, uh, you know, what types of issues you have had. Well, uh, let me step back for a moment and talk to you a little bit about sort of what we do as an organization. We have a, a, about a four-person security team that comes to all of our events. Uh, they will actually come out several days before the events, network with local uh, law enforcement to make sure uh, we've made the proper connections in case anything does happen, uh, talk a little bit about some of the situations that we've had in the past. But the reality is we haven't had anything significant. I mean, to your point, there's not a lot of editing out of, of, of problems because there really haven't been any problems. And, and we certainly believe that's part of what, what we've done is that when we go to an event, we send an advanced team out, we make sure we interact with local law enforcement. You know, frankly, uh, we just don't have any problems. And, and uh, you know, whether it's our fans uh, are there to enjoy the sport and they're not interested in, in doing uh, other things that aren't good or whether or not it's a result of our preparation, I don't know. But the proof is in the pudding. We really haven't had any problems. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Councillor Deal. Yes, thank you very much. Um, um, I've got your website and your rules and fouls up here, including timidity. I think that should be a rule in council as well. No timidity allowed. Um, but one of the concerns that uh, uh, that came up a few years ago when this came to us, and, and why at the time I was I was not prepared yet to, to support it, was was the evolution of the sport and how the rules have changed and how the regulations have really firmed up over the recent years. And I know UFC is clearly well established with rules, but not everyone is the UFC. So. Um, Perhaps you can talk about how, how the sport has evolved over, let's say, the last five years and, and become more regulated. Well, as I said uh, in my opening presentation, regulation is a key part of the success of, of the UFC and the sport of mixed martial arts. And, and to that point, what's happened, and it was obviously mentioned in Mr. Hamill's report, was the unified rules of mixed martial arts have essentially become the standard for, for what takes place in our events in the octagon or in the ring. Uh, so whether or not you're participating in an event in Vancouver, whether it's in Montreal, whether it's in Cologne, Germany, or, or Sydney, Australia, or anywhere in the United States, the rules of what take place inside the octagon are uniform. And we feel that's important. Um, that's been a result of, uh, frankly, the regulatory process, learning best practices. It really started out, uh, the state of New Jersey, frankly, was the first sport, first state, excuse me, to regulate the sport of mixed martial arts. And New Jersey set down a lot of these rules, but Nevada was also very important in, in enhancing those rules. And um, in the United States, um, and actually throughout North America, there's an organization called the Association of Boxing Commissioners or the Association of Athletic Commissions, which I know uh, members of your provincial staffs, and I don't know if your city staffs are attending those, but I know uh, many members of the provincial uh, regulatory bodies attend that. This is a convention that takes place every year where members of Athletic Commission of the United States and Canada and some places outside of North America come and talk about rules, talk about regulations, talk about what's working 
frankly, more importantly, talk about what's not working. And they work to create uniform best practices. And so the Association of Boxing Commissioners, or the Association of Athletic Commissioners, as it's now called, was instrumental in developing this unified set of, of mixed martial arts rules, which we believe is um, is, is been important to the safety of the sport. But I can tell you, like all sports, whether it's football that's been mentioned here today or hockey or others, we're constantly looking to try to make the sport safer. And I, I, I respect uh, this, the, the, the comments made earlier by the council about concussions and not making light of you know uh, the fact that we're better than boxing. Um, frankly, our standard is not boxing. Our standard is, is a standard we set for ourselves, which is to try to make the sport as safe as possible. And like all sports, we're constantly looking at rule changes and other things to try to make the sport safer and safer. So, so uh, okay, that, and that's, uh, that gives me some comfort there. Thank you. And um, so the first rule of Fight Club is, uh, is no, no timidity, I guess. <laughs> or no eye gouging or fish hooking. Okay, thank you very much.